Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today I'm answering some of your questions, like what is the best first luxury watch to buy? Also, what is the most valuable watch in my collection? Do I actually wear it? And has the market, the current market, affected Delray Watches sales and how we buy watches? All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing my Gerard Perigo Laureato Evo 3 Chronograph, uh, rose gold on alligator. Kind of my FU watch. I love it. It's douchey. It's big. It's loud. Uh, it's the only one like that in my collection. I adore it. Um, oof, trying to get it to sit on the on the wrist well because I've been worn it a little bit and the strap got bent. And also, guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. We got some pretty rare pieces in lately, including this beautiful Chopic Ant uh, Antarctic Monochrome, limited edition to 33 pieces. These Chopics are completely sold out. I believe for two years, Chopic has sold out their entire Antarctic line, I believe for two years, and we have one. Not to mention, not only do we have one, it's also the cheapest one available just like most things at Delray Watch. We got this beautiful GP Laureato white dial. We also have the blue dial available, just came in. And this gorgeous Omega Seamaster blue wave dial, two-tone on rubber. All that and more at DelrayWatch.com. Also guys, we put up a new sale section where all our kind of discounted inventory is uh, not all of it, but most of it is in one place, so you guys don't have to sort through it. That's right at the top of the menu bar. Check it out on DelrayWatch.com, link in the description below. Guys, these are some questions you've asked me on my Instagram account, at Federico Talks Watches. Q&A pic uh, picture pops up two to three times a month. When you see that picture, feel free to ask a question. Once I get a ton of questions, I take it down. Please don't DM me, though, as I do not check them. In no particular order. Quinbot said, Hey Fed, long time viewer, first time asker. What are your thoughts on Kustos watches? Thanks. Oof, I never thought anybody would ask about Kustos. Kustos is a small brand, uh, part of the Frank Mueller group, along with Frank Mueller, Bax and Strauss, uh, Kustos, and I believe Martin Braun. Kind of like a Richard Meal take in a Frank Mueller esque case, but with like Edda movements. I think they look cool. Uh, they tend to be a little too big for me. Uh, I do like the boldness. Uh, much less expensive than Richard Meal, but way too expensive for the Edda movements they use. I think Kustos is an awful deal, brand new, but they're so. They lose so much value that actually pre-owned, if you buy a Kustos, you can get a great watch for the money. Uh, overall, high quality watches, not a very well-known brand. Retail price, totally absurd. Ante Zarulia. Hey Federico, hope you are well. Are you adjusting the moon phase in your H Moser when wearing it? Ante, great question. So I do adjust the complications on my watches usually. Uh, I am guilty of sometimes not adjusting the date um, because I'm, I rush. Even though if it's a calendar watch, I will adjust it. Uh, I'll adjust a GMT and, of course, a world time. But the moon phase, I never do adjust because I don't care what the phase of the moon is. I just find the complication very beautiful to look at, uh, poetic, uh, and it gives uh, interest on the dial. I bought that watch because of the movement and because of the look. Uh, but not necessarily because of the complication, even though moon phase is my favorite complication and it is a hundred percent and totally useless to me. But, you know, that's okay. I buy what I like. Akob Stefko. Longine Heritage Classic Sector Dial or Nomos Orion is the first luxury dress watch. Man, this one is tough. These are both great contenders. I love the look of that Longine. I really, really do, but I'm going to give this one to Nomos just because I'm biased. Uh, I've loved Nomos for a long time. They've been a great luxury proposition for a long time. And uh, while Longines has also been a good luxury proposition, they've really upped their game in the past seven or eight years, whereas Nomos's game has always been Nomos's game since they've been around. I find the Orion very, very slim. Uh, I love how Nomos makes their watches. I love the Bauhaus styling. While both watches are total winners, 
I actually think the Nomo Sorion is probably the first, the best first luxury dress watch you can buy. Uh, and I don't know if I've said it before, but if I haven't, uh, well, you heard it here. SMG3082. Hey, Fed, fellow Floridian here. What is your most prized piece in your collection? Is it a safe queen or do you wear it with pride? Cheers. Well, the most prized and probably most valuable watch in my collection is that Moser uh, Moon Phase limited edition. Uh, I've never spent that much on a watch. Absolutely love it. Um, I do wear it, just not a ton. I, it's a dressier watch that I save for special occasions. Um, I like to wear it uh, to events, during holidays, to formal dinners. But at the same time, it's not a safe queen. I don't like wear it four times a year. I do wear it quite often, but just not as often as my other watches. It probably gets worn four to five times a month, which I wouldn't consider a safe queen, uh, but I would still consider it like special occasion status. And last but not least, Idas Ma. Has the current market impacted your selling volume or buying? Any noticeable trends other than the hype pieces deflating? Thanks, Fed. Um, I mean, yes, sales are definitely a little down, I think, across most dealers, but it is mostly the hype pieces that are affected. Now, while those being massively affected has also brought the watch market down in general overall, but thankfully, we're positioned quite well. Now, while well, sales are down, um, I think we're doing better than most dealers and you know, things are up and down for everybody, but we don't tend to focus on high pieces. We sell a lot more than Patek AP and Rolex. In fact, that's a minor part of our business. Um, so while other things have also become a little harder to sell, if my entire business was Rolex, AP and Patek, I'd be down 70%. Uh, and we're down nowhere near that. Um, in fact, nowhere even in the same universe as that. Has it affected our buying? Yes, uh, we are trying to be slightly more conservative. We're not stocking multiples. Um, you know, the market has readjusted on pricing, so we're readjusting on pricing and trying to maintain our margin, but based on the new market price. Um, all typical business stuff. We're taking a little bit less risk, being more conservative. Things are down. However, the Watch Geek watches we sell, you know, there's not much competition for them. Uh, people know that that's what we stock. And generally, watch geeks are still buying watches. They're just not paying a 300% markup on a Rolex, which is okay because it's something that, you know, sure, we, we have Rolexes on occasion. It's not our bread and butter. So luckily, I think we're handling it way better than most. And I'm not particularly worried. I'm just being cautious. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching another episode. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.